Hi, everybody. Thank you to be here. I'm going to present um, how to uh, perform downstream analysis using Serra uh, and Signac. And this is uh, prepared for the next data, the web processor with Cell Ranger Arc. So uh, in order to start, I'm going to share with you uh, code that you can replicate anytime here or in your house. Uh, this is the link. Let me see what is here, the, uh, the chat, okay. Uh, there is a link to download the, the data. So if you go to this link, you are going to have uh, the list of data sets, public data sets. So just be sure to select uh, in software, the Cell Ranger Arc. And also in the pipeline, this uh, code is uh, prepared with the version two or greater. So you can pick up any one of these three uh, options of pipeline versions that you can see here. Um, I highly recommend that you implement the, the pipeline with uh, around 3,000 cells or less. Uh, because if you use this, uh, there are some data sets with 3,000 cells, it's a bit uh, hard to process the information. You can have a time to do it. So, uh, I also want to add before to start that uh, this uh, pipeline is prepared in three meetings in order to have time to talk about uh, some conceptual uh, issues around the pipeline. So for this one, we are going just to talk about quality uh, that is related with the single cell gene expression and, and with the accessible chromatin, chromatin for attack. Uh, so um, I will start. For this talk, we are going to see uh, where are the cell ranger R data sets that are the input data. And we are going to analyze briefly the initial report that is a report that generate a cell ranger automatically when process the counts. And also we are going to see a bit about of the how to conform it, the data matrices. And then we are going to uh, see what software we need to run the pipeline, Serrat and Signat, and the specific versions because I have some issues when I try to just update the packages. So I'm going to, to share some of my experience with that. And also we are going to see uh, briefly what are the main uh, quality uh, measures that are taken into account in the exploratory analysis for gene expression and for attack. And we are going to end merging uh, data, uh, several several objects that we are going to create in order to compare statistics. Okay, so following the, the flow, well, uh, Seurat, uh, all this pipeline is based in Seurat and it's uh, like adding the chromatin assay in order to have the information of the accessibility chromat chromatin. Quick, quick question. Yeah. Are you starting from like a well cell or are you assuming everybody has fast cues? Yeah. Because yeah. this uh, it seems like you're talking about the Surat object and mm -hmm. that assumes like the data has already been processed. Yeah, I'm going to show about what is the data and all the stuff. I'm just going to show how it's conforming the, the workflow but I'm going to go back to the inputs okay. in order to show what are the folder and what data you need. So you can go back, back and forth. Okay. Yeah, but I can do it. I a very a good point. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to stop here just to 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 talk about, about what Kiji says. Oh, let me see my move this thing. Oh, I move it, okay. Okay, uh, when you are processing uh, this data, um, you usually, I'm going to go back here. Let's say that I'm going to pick up um, this one. This is a single cell, multi attack and gene expression data. The version is the 2.00 and it's a cell ranger R counts. It's human, uh, okay, so I'm going to take it. And then when you enter to the, to the, 
to the to the description of the sample, you are going to find that we have two libraries generate. That is the attack and if the gene expression library, and it's going to provide uh, uh like general information about the key metrics that are associated with each one of the assays. But we have also uh the web summary report that is the initial that I took here. Uh, that is why I want to explain a bit more this. Uh, let me show you here. We are going to have you are going to have this kind of file structure. This file structure has a um, uh, a bunch of data that you are going to find here. So further all, if I go to to view the 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 web summary, you are going to see the estimated number of cells that they count. Also, the attack median quality fragments per cell in the in the gene expression median genes per cell. And all this information is like embedded in these tables that are here. So we have we can pull each one of these uh, tables has information related with the metrics that were calculated here. Just this is the summary. So here, uh, the most, uh, let's say the elementary file that we need to pull up to to run this in Serrat and Signat is uh, this run summary HTML is this one. It's the same that you are looking here. But we need at least three files. And uh, these three files is the information related with the metadata that is per barcode summary metrics. It's a CSV file. And the other file is the filter feature barcode metrics. Uh, that has the counts related with the gene expression. And we have also, uh, we also need the attack, attack per fragment, attack per fragment information file that is a TSB file that has the information related with the with the attack fragments. But you, uh, for, if you just download the information that you are going to pull to process the data, you are going to find errors that are related with the indexes. So you need to be careful to download also the indexes of the files if you have it in the uh, in the in the folder because it's like a transparent process that is not required when you are pulling the data but it's needed when you are uh, getting the counts so if you put this in the same folder you are going to have all the information that you need uh, this is something that I have found in several of these public data sets you need to pull up this download in the same folder just to add something so these are the output after running several hard counts so you get these outputs and from this you can like the new so that can see mm -hmm. yes in fact this is the inputs the input files that you can see here the sequencing data fastqs and the library CLB. and if you want for example uh, you need to follow like a naming convention uh, to process the, the information that is um, that is a standard the cell ranger are uh, defined to, to process the count matrices. So you need to rename each one of the input files in order to, to run the cell ranger arc. But for this talk, we are going specifically to talk about how can we reproduce this information using Serrat and Signac. So we are assuming that we have the count metrics ready to implement the pipeline. I saw that uh, it looks like uh, Cell Ranger Arc outputs a peak file for your uh, attack seek data. Do you like that, or do you prefer you doing your own peak file? I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. There's a bad peak file uh, available if you go back to, I guess the frack frozen lift no data you were looking oh, at before. Okay, but uh, the the attack the attack information is the information about the fragments in order that you compute again the peaks. The peaks is the overlapping of the fragments. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you like that peak file or do you remake another one? No, we are reading the attack fragments, but not we are not reading the peaks directly. We reduce like uh, you have the results of Sevenger art. You know, so and then it's like Signac and uh, so that and Signac start, you know, from the out, 
without treating the big fives. So we need to, we need to do like the analysis. So do you with SEG, uh, the the multi element pipeline? Do you make your own peak file? Yes. So you do. So have you compared the two? You can compare it because you can pull information from the outputs of the Cell Ranger R yeah. against your own uh, data processor. You can generate yeah. additional data. But have you guys done it? Because I don't, I don't, I don't want to. I'm asking if, you, if you've if you done it and you have an opinion on whether or not no. you prefer one or the other. No, no, no. no. We are processing again all the pipeline. Yes, yeah. yeah, so and you're just seeing some kind of key metrics and we see we have the same media of genes, the same media of peaks, the uh, similar clusters and all the other stuff. And the reason is because the Cell Ranger R outputs, they are taking a truncated matrix. The matrix is not accused uh, for any kind of contours. Okay. So you think you, if you were to look at it, you'd think you would see differences because what you guys are doing is doing is with QC, you don't think Cell Ranger is outputting any uh, QC when it does their peaks? It's processing a QC, but it's not uh, another QC that you can consider, for example, to remove mitochondrial content, to remove uh, any kind of low label of this. Mm, not the same type of rigor. No, uh, scientific no. Rigor. they have a pipeline defined it just to take into account that if you find a gene, a gene expression mm -hmm. information, you have also an attack fragment associated. Yes. So there is the like the minimum control that they apply. So you really, the information that you have uh, for Cell Ranger R mm -hmm. is an approximation, uh, it's an exploratory analysis to see information. Probably you can have the same, but probably not. Probably. <laughs> I, 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 I like what I'm hearing here saying that uh, mm. it's just not the same rigor of QC mm. that you think. Of. Yes, that's true. That's correct. Yeah, mm. Some people start from the filtered data, but we. Uh, just here to summarize, we are taking the filter data mm -hmm. instead to analyze the the raw data. Mm -hmm. Because okay. you, you can do it that way. If you want to do that, uh, you have available the the information here. Here is the... Um, uh, yeah, I'm more familiar with oh, the okay. expression, but I'm not familiar with the taxi. Okay. So that's why. I'm curious. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, it's, uh, the most substantial difference that I have found is that uh, the quality control that they apply to generate the counts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is very basic. Mm -hmm. in, in it's only like a focus set and to have a representation in the attack side about the gene expression that they are getting. What about this uh, big wig smooth position track? Have you looked at that and have you compared it with what you guys made? No, this is not a comparison among the yeah the data. It's just a, like a replication of the information and mm -hmm. to get some of the or usual standard with this applied it and how you can like uh, compose the object and that kind of okay. information. Yeah, okay. but it's a good point. Yeah. Okay, so um, after that you compute this, you like here uh, clarify, you get this, uh, um, you get a folder of information that we can see better here. Um, let's see, I'm going to move here. Mm, I'm going to move to this one. This is the raw data that we have. This raw data that we have here um, is not really uh, raw data. This is the raw data for us to, re to replicate the, the pipeline with Serrat and Cigna. The raw data, the input fast queues for Cell Ranger R are in other files. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to, to have it clear. So now to process the information here, uh, we, we have to to make a renaming convention in order to process the data. But at the end, when you process the information with Cell Ranger, uh, let's just say that I go to here, I have one folder like this one, and I have an output folder. And in this output folder, you have the same information that I show in here. Mm. Yes, it, that is the, the, T, the TBI files, the BAM files, the H1 file, and the summary CSV metrics. There's the same information that we have 
here uh, listed. So uh, when we are now to, to perform the, the analysis, the information that we are taking is exactly the same. Just be careful because in versions that are uh, the version of, it depends. If you are going to look for a pipeline in Google and you have a big method that is implemented with Sega version uh, 3.9 or something like this, because there are several versions, you are going to find that some of these names change uh, the base name. So just be careful to pick up and check what version are you are you are uh, generating also uh well following this once that we have identified the the data uh what we are going to do now uh is to we are going to you we have identified the gene expression and chromatin accessibility information uh and we have also need the annotation uh so with this information we are going to create a several object that has attached uh, uh, the gene expression and some metadata. And we are going to wrap it with the chromatin accessibility information, and we are going to generate the three uh, quality QCs that we, that, that, that are frequently used, that is the nucleosome-free uh, nucleosome regions, the transcription star sites, and related information. And then, uh, that we are going to QC the, the data sets in order to compare the information with the same statistics that we are generating here. And we are going to merge, merge the data in order to see the result. And that's all what we are going to do now. Yeah, just to add that for someone like Luis Cusaura, it's only you add a layer of attack you know, to the Saura object, that's all. If you uh, yeah, it's like used to like the uh, SORAT object. So the attack is a layer, yeah. Okay. It's one of the assays. You don't have two separate yeah. objects. What you have is yeah. two separate op assays within the object, and yeah. then you move to into Yeah, you move from RNA to attack. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you let me see if I forget something. No, I don't forget it. Okay. So um, let's do this. So I have a folder prepared here um, where I, sorry. And just to add something like, uh, sorry, uh, Cynthia talked about the version. We had lots of issues mm. between uh, version four to version five because also Sorat has been updated. So yeah, it was like a really nightmare for us. Some okay, and the in the uh, in the project, we need to well. I have this structure. We have code. We have two scripts. One for run this part, this uh this code, and we have another one with some kind of basic functions to save that, and also a folder to save the plots and the process the data. It's to save the the several objects. Uh, here in process the data, you also store the information that is related with the the minimum files that we need to process this this information. We have two samples here: the human brain 3K, and we have also the PBMC uh, granulocytos storage. It's a, it's also a 3K thousand uh, data set. And for each one, we have at least um the attack fragments with the index. We have also uh, the filter feature barcode metrics, and we have also the metadata. The metadata are stored in per barcode metrics. But if you pick up um, data that were processed with versions uh, 1.00, you are going to have a different name. And we have the same with this other sample. OK. Uh, and we have insisted because it's really like a headache. You need to be careful with the with the versions. So there is a separate version in CRAN, but the version is the version four. You can pick up and try. And the current version is available in the repository of the developers in the Sat Satihat lab. And uh, there are another and to 
install previous versions. If you are taking another uh, Bignete, you just need to specify the version. For Signat, uh, we are using the version 1.90 that is uh, perfectly accompanied with this with the version of Sera that we are using. That is the 4.9.9, .9. and well, you need another uh, files and libraries. Okay, uh, this is just to create the folders that I have there and some statistics related with quantities that I usually compare the data. And here, um, mm, uh, more bigger? Ah, how? What? What do you mean? Do, do... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, um, I'm going to start with the with this uh, sample. This sample is. Is the is one of the that I have in the link. So these are the links for the each file that we need. We need the feature the barcode metrics, the per barcode metrics, and the attack fragments. So we are on first to process this one that is here. Now, uh, to your object wasn't found. Uh, yeah, just because the sample is the name. Uh, since it was the best sample is FFDLC, then this was sample DLC. Your function, you're giving the wrong sample name, I assume, but... Yeah, yeah, because just uh, the, the change of the sample name. Oh, okay, I got it. Maybe. Yes, yeah, sorry. You should have done the second one. Sorry, I was asleep, I think. Okay. Yeah, but this was some. Yeah, but it should have moved to else. No, I, it no, I think that I found you. Sorry. Why uh, did you find it? Let me see. Error object. Oh, I found it. Okay. Sorry. It's not the things. Okay. He doesn't care. Which one do you want to go? Sorry? Which one do you want to go? This one? The, then, uh, um... then you need to change the sample. Oh, okay, it's okay. I'm going to run both okay. just to merge it. It's okay. A any of these is, is okay. Oh, he's bad. <laughs> the wrong line has changed. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, just to jump lines. Okay, so now um, I'm going to read the object. I'm going to pull up the gene expression information here in this line. And I, we are going to print the first lines just to see. Okay, so this is just the, the metrics. So now we are going to read the metadata. The metadata, as I said, is in the CBS file. And this metadata has a lot, a lot of information. It, it has like, let me show the column names. The column names of the metadata. It has around uh, 20, 29, uh, fields that are related with different information that you can add to the to the SEURAT. But to this uh, practice, we just need the attack peak region fragments and the attack fragments. That is the minimum data that you can have. So in order to know to not attach all the metadata, you're just going to pick up that one. Only attack uh, peak region fragments and attack fragments. So here, I'm just going to attach the, the two columns. Uh, with create serrat objects, uh, you are we are going to create the serrat, and we are going to add the the counts. This is the name of the assay. This is the sample name that I'm going to give to the to the object, and these are the metadata that we still pull up. So 
And now if we check the several object, we are going to have here the object with the number of features across the across the this number of cells. And only has one aside. The active side now is the just the gene expression information and, and there is present the counts and the metadata. If you want to see the information related with the structure, we just can see the structure of the of the object. And we are going to find here uh, that we have this assay, the DNA, and all the slots that you can access. It has uh, 13 slots. You can access the counts, the data, and where we don't have any of the scale data generated, and we have empty spaces. And for the metadata, the information that we can pull up, we have the origin ident, the name, when we can group the different experiments. And this is the two uh, metadata that we recently had from the CBS file. We have the gene expression information, and the naming of the features, and we have not any kind of clustering processes here. Uh, then uh, we can um, save the data if you want, if you wish. But then that we have the information, we are going to perform the, uh, we are going to calculate the um, the log files with the UMI counts and the MITO labels. So this is for the first one. And here we are going to calculate the MITO percentage, the MITO ratio, and also the percentage of ribosomal genes that in some experiment are required, depending on the structure. Why are you doing the division by? What? So Why are you doing the division after calculating logs? This one? Mm -hmm. This is the number, this. Just because of the properties oh. of logarithms. Sorry? The you know, properties of logarithms. The low logarithms? The property of the logarithms? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It should be minus or k. That's what you're trying to do. What, what's the idea behind um, this code here? You're calculating mitochondria levels by taking the log of the end features of RNA. No, then you want to divide. Why, why are you dividing? What's the idea? Okay, this is a bad label. Okay, this is one metadata that we are adding, and this is another another metadata. Are not linked. Uh, just to to not yeah, confuse. Like line one thirty three, you want to calculate the genes for you and mine, right? Like the fraction of um, uh, reads that were like aligned to two genes out of all of the ones we had. Mm. Uh, but I don't think you're doing it correct. <laughs> I mean, you can skip it. Yeah, I I can double check this this point. Yeah. Yes, in fact, I don't use it any any. Anymore? Yeah. 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 No. No. I. I. Uh, well, it, it's not that I don't use it. I was trying to see different kind of statistics and seeing different plots with different measures. Mm -hmm. That was the original idea. So many of the regulations that I did when I was implementing the Pavlan are not useful. Mm -hmm. So you have to take into account that uh, some of these were particularly. Uh, useless, even when they are included in the big networks. So there are some of these that are not really required. So you cannot see really a, a practical use. But anyway, uh, this is just an example of how to, uh, how to perform uh, operations between metadata. And he this, um, the percentage feature set is not just to calculate empty level, you can calculate any kind of any kind of a percentage that you wish you have a pattern to follow in the cells. And okay, now if we see the metadata, well, we need, we have additional information that is related here. Uh, we have something that I have to double check. We have the percentage of mitochondria levels, the ratio and the percentage of mitochondria or the ribo mito percentage of ribosomal genes. Um, then after this, uh, we are going to just to keep an eye to some information uh, that is related with the gene expression. So let's plot this quickly. Okay, uh, we are plotting here the the number of 
of UMI, the number of gene expression, and the percentage of mitochondrial genes. And uh, it's looped for experiment, but now just we have one. So we are going just to have one plot. So this is a more basic uh, information about the gene expression. I know that most of you are familiarized with that. So this is just to uh, highlight that, for example, uh, here, we have um, expanded the mitochondrial percentage around 40 percentage, it's too high. So this is one of the subsets that we are going to apply at the end. And this is the this is the number of molecules and this is the media of genes that cannot be appreciated in this kind of plot. So we have another different plots. Um, here we are just going to plot the, the density of molecular identifiers per cell just to have a, a bit caption of this. So you can have um, a bit more, uh, um, better idea of what are the days or how is the density of the of these counts. What's your line here? Uh, it's because usually this is the threshold there I wish to cut. So it's just to have a, like a reference that is taken for, uh, I made like a Excel sheet with some of the the common thresholds that most of the experiments uh, plot. So I just taking into account that. Is it a percentage or is it a, a fixed number? It's a can be a I use it as a percentage. I calculate uh, quantities, but most of the people use just a number. So it's up to you. Yeah. and then. I would never really do it based on the market. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The data sets are very different. Mm. Studying, so. Like a lot of the tutorials will be like, oh, just drop anything yeah. above like below like a hundred. No, I, I've seen that where yeah. it's like uh, some of the really big atlas are like drop anything above uh, a thousand. But they have a lot. So it's like they're dropping like maybe a thousand or two from mm -hmm. other hundred million mm -hmm. cells. So. So you, know, so you guys use a, you, you suggest a percentage is it, we don't use a, a hard number no we I'll, don't we I'll ask you later what you what how you calculate the percentage because I know it's taking a bunch of time mm -hmm. it's more of a bigger quantile it's a quantile thing mm -hmm. okay a quantile we take the test the 10 percent quantile like mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. deviation from the yeah mm -hmm. And so on. These outliers. Yeah. It is outlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I, I've used that before. So. Um, there is one, and also we uh, test um taking the standard the standard deviation mm -hmm. like a reference, mm -hmm. and also taking uh um, probabilities and curing the test mm -hmm. just to see different scenarios. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, and uh, then, uh, let me see, what is this? Uh, this is just um, like to have an idea of how the information is correlated. So here, what we are seeing is the, ah, oh, sorry. Okay, is the number of molecular identifiers and the number of genes. So you can see here that this is, um, plotted against the percent of mitochondrial content. So it's usually to see that when we have cells with less number of molecules, we have also a, a low number of genes and there in these genes has a lot of mitochondrial content. So this can be taken as a reference about uh, how is the data, uh, how is the previous, previously the data before the QC identity. Um, after this, uh, I'm going to load the annotation to attach it to, to the attack object. This is performed with SIGNAC. Okay. Mm. So from the same, uh, from the same filtered uh, barcode metrics that I pull up at the beginning, now I'm going to pull up the peaks the information on the peaks, and I'm going to say store it in this variable. 
Uh, well, after the, the annotation be loaded. Okay, it's just a minute, please. Do you have any questions for me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? Um, yeah, guys. Call me taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's 60%. It's close. Something to add here? No, just if you has any question about Sobrat, you have the expert <laughs> you can like the here, yeah, teach me. Okay. Yes, of course. It's very helpful. Yeah, of course. Uh so we can here now to pull up the peaks and then we are going to convert the genomic coordinates in this standard. It the use um the pipeline. So um, I'm going to run this and then I'm going to this important function that is to create the, the chromatin assay. This is a signal function and in this function we have to add the peaks, the information of the peaks. Uh, this is the format that we are going to provide two points and then the coordinate, the first uh, position and the second position. And then we have to attach the information of the fragments that is in the TLB file that I explained at the beginning. Remember, if you don't have the index in the same folder, probably you are going to receive an error. And the error is very bad. It's not very informative. And then, <laughs> yes, it was really difficult to find. And also I'm going to add the information about the annotation. So I'm going to run this code. And this is almost, yeah. So he's checking um, 40,200 uh, cell barcodes. Now, if we see the chromatin object, we can see that we have the assay and we have present one fragment files. We have not added motives, but you can add it if you wish. Now to the previous several objects that we have, we are going to add the chromatin assay information that is that what he explained. I did, I did mean to ask you about the annotation file. How did you get the annotation file? Is this just the provided? Yes, it was provided. There. Is it on the 10X? Yes. Or the self it's the Saint Ranger Arc. Saint Ranger Arc here. This. They have the annotation. Mm -hmm. But there is a there is a script to generate your own yeah. annotations. There is. There, there is. I have not tested by myself. It I it's something that I have to do. Uh, Leo asked me to to how do you say to update the annotation in order to? Mm -hmm. Or spam? Well, I was telling you not to use the symbol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah uh, yes, not to use exactly. the symbol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was. Line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a few points that you can explain. Okay. Mm, this is something that I haven't seen. Like the, the merge between the symbol and the letter. Um, the, the ones we have on the annotation files that like uh, make sense that word. Or it's a it's a modified word. Mm -hmm. I have to go to that, but by now I'm pulling this one. That is the provided that is uh, for certain era. It has a wrapper of this. So here first, I'm going to attach the chromatin information and I'm going to show you how the information is attached here. Do you remember at the beginning? Um, I'm sorry. At the, what, what I said? Okay. Oh. Where I am? I'm here. Okay, do you remember at the beginning we have information related with the gene with the gene expression, but now we have two layers present, but also we have another aside that is the attack. So if we inspect the object, uh, let's say this way. Okay. We now can see that we have, where well, the attack information is over here. Let me show you. This is the motif. Here is the attack. 
heal the attack information with 16 slots. So we you have different information about the ranges and also about the motifs. You have something and also information about the annotation. And also you have now information about the links. So um yes, and we have now uh new metadata added to the objects. And so now that you have that, uh, there is we need to to assign the annotation again to the present to the to the layer to the asset to the attack asset to the separate object. And then if we see the object, we now have the end counts here, and the and the end of the features attack counts. So now that we have this information here, we can perform at least with the time that we have available, three metrics. One of these, two of these are the most important, the, these, the nucleosome uh, signal. I'm going to explain briefly something about it. Um, we, have, we are going to have a plot like this. So in this in this plot uh, is information is, is information related with the structure of the of the fragment, but uh, related with the nucleosome signal. So each one of these points is uh, a fragment that it's open in the chromatin. It's the nucleosome uh, unwrapped, and we have uh, an open space, and this is the first uh, four hundred forty seven page bases. So this is one nucleosome, this is the two nucleosomes, and this is three nucleosomes. So when we have, a, a, let's say, a flat a distribution, you can assume that the chromatin a, a structure is compromised. So the first that we need to see here is that we have a, some kind of pattern when we can see a mononucleosome, a deconucleosome, and a multinucleosome signal. In, in the middle of the structure. So uh, as I have inspected the files directly, I can see that most of the fragments that are sequenced are around 5,000 pay bases. So uh, you usually are going to find information related on the here. And this other plot that we are going to generate is the, this is not as important as this one. Let me make it small. This is related with the transcription start sites enrichment. And you can uh, like generate two of these uh, kind of, of plots in order to explore the information. But basically, it's an aggregate function that is trying to uh, assimilate to a normal distribution in order to see that most of the transcription star sites that enrich it are in the are set in the middle. This is a set of score, and all the 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 remaining fragments are assigned uh, taken into account the, sta the standard deviation. So what what happens here is that uh, to take this account, usually the pipeline is going to take one thousand pay bases to each site, but you can move that distance to 500 to 50 or or until 2000 or pay basis for each side depending on what is your objective i'll just correct you but yeah not based on the distance right? oh yeah because it's based on the temperature so as this for a minus a thousand or plus a thousand or like super like way up right? um, like that. but i think that the, to propose to process said they normalize it to c square to just to take the center, yeah, but not the C4 yeah. is not center. center by the wind, divide by the center, mm -hmm. yeah, so you get like a standard division of one, yeah, kind of like sample size, and you can say that it's approximately distributed, approximately distributed, normal distribution, but this yeah. is not the normal distribution, no, but they try to approximate, I think, to. Well, okay, I I would double check. I I understand that way, but oh, okay, I can I can check it. So the idea here into this one is to is to uh, uh classify is to classify these transcription star sites um 
in, for example, if you have a higher, if you have less than one transcription star site, you're assuming that you don't have a, a good quality of the information. So you at least need to have one. So here, what you are seeing is a classification. This is the low, the low, uh, the fragments with the don't doesn't have a, any transcription star size, so you cannot have any pattern on the distribution. Uh, and these are the one that we want to remain for the for continue with the downstream analysis. So to process these two plots, first we are going to to set the default aside uh, as attack because we are currently in RNA. And so with nucleus on signal, we are going to process the first plot that is this one. And so it's going to take just like a half a minute. Yes, it's ready. So then the I have the nucleus on signal, um, we are going to classify when we have the nucleus signal uh, greater than four, it's high, but if we have later than four, it's going to be low. So this is just a classification. And then we are going to to um, to plot it with, with the fragment histogram, um, this information, but nucleus on group. So we are going to see how this data set looks like. So this is the information that we, he he we have here for this sample. And this is uh, also uh, added to the metadata. So now we can use that information to subset the, the, the data set. And this is the last one that we are going to see that is the how to process the transcription star size enrichment. There are two modalities. You need to be careful here because uh, if you uh, process this uh, statistic with far, with fast equal true, it's going to get the statistic, but it's not going to generate um, metrics to to uh, um, to plot the information with this a uh, function. So if you don't use uh, the fast the fast mode to false, you cannot use this function. So this is this is something that you have to do. The the issue with this is that it requires a lot of memory. Uh, to process it. So sometimes it's convenient just to put it fast equal to and just have the statistic, and but you cannot plot it. So it depends what do you want to do. Um, how, how much is a lot of memory? For example, if you have uh, 3,000 uh, cells, yeah. you need around a uh, minimum 30 or 40 gigas. Really? Yes. 3,000 cells? Yeah. Okay, I yes. see what the default is. Like. Yes. Yes, yeah, so just I to show is oh the default is true. Yeah. <laughs> so that it, it does fast. Yeah, I see why they try to skip See, that. Fast uh, yeah. so fast falls is uh, make it <laughs> make it, uh, it this is in order that they store the or build the so, the dynamics. So thing. if you do default which is false, mm -hmm. fast is true. Mm -hmm. It how much memory does that take instead? Like fifteen. Yes, with a, conven a conventional uh, laptop, I can process. Okay. Yes. It's still a lot, though. <laughs> well, <laughs> how do you say that? I, I don't know. It's uh... commercial, but like. Uh, okay, uh, I think normally. No? Ah, oh, well, I have one of these in my house. Normally, eight or less. Really? Yeah, for oh, a no. laptop, eight gigs. Okay. Yeah, eight is a lot. Uh, four is probably normal for a regular. Yeah, so you cannot use a normal <laughs> PC. So anyway, mm -hmm. okay. Well, um, he has not started yet, as you can see. And see this. This is a very common uh warning that you receive when cited the index of the attack fragments is old. But I just found this uh, kind of situation when I take in public data sets, because when I processing our, our own data sets and we are using the, we are like generating, again, the indexes and all the stock, we have, we don't not receive this kind of ones. Mm -hmm. So my appreciation is that these are all indexes, but you can anyway process information. It's 
it's not uh, like a, an issue. Really. It's just a warning that maybe you want to, you could run again the server you are and to update the information and you can process it again without any warning. So this is what I have found that you can see. Maybe there's another thing related. Okay, we have the scores now. Now that we have the scores, we are going to classify again the information. Uh, we are going to say in this case that we are considering reached more than two transcription star size and otherwise they are low quality. And then we are going to plot the information with the this is plot and we are going to see here the information. So this plot cannot be generated if you have false, uh, the fast way uh, to true. If you have true fast way, you cannot plot it. Mm -hmm. You need to have it as false in order to create the metrics, to pull the data and to, to do this thing. Have you ever tried to uh, maybe down sample? Yeah. As like you have a bigger data set, you don't want to use all of it. Down sample, it's like 5,000. Mm -hmm. Do you think it would give you roughly the same or? I think, yeah, yeah I had to, to, to check it. Okay, so uh, finally, uh, well, we have this information here. You can also plot another kind of information like the black, black leaks fraction regions, I think that it was more useful in the previous annotation uh, talking about human mm -hmm. because there was this uh, like not very well annotated uh, part. So this is a way to mass the information. So if you want to see this, you can calculate it here. Uh, you squeeze this, uh, this uh, like uh, function that has available uh, a signal, fraction count in region. So basically we add the object, we add, we say what uh, aside we are using and we are, and we define what is the region that we want to mask. And you can have also the, you can make some kind of calculation if you wish to see uh, some kind of normalization there. Um, just because of time, I'm going to jump this and I want to show you particularly some information here. So when do you have your, your data set ready? If you want to remove, let's say in the standard way, low quality cells, these are like the rigid numbers that most of the pylons show that I'm not recommending. I'm just showing here that for example, they use these stress poles to remove, uh, to remove uh, low cells that have uh, these stress poles the low and the high threshold, and this is for attack fragments. And this is the meto percentage that in my case, and related to some information that we have, I'm defining it, a uh, meto rate, a uh, meto percentage, less than 10 percentage. Um, I, uh, I prefer to have these nucleus and regions that uh, be at least two, and the transcription star size, at least one transcription site in the in the data. So we use this subset uh, function and we define here the object that we are going to pull up and just pull it to run it. The last function that we use is the blacklist one. So the functions that we use are like all custom functions that we No, no it's it's a several, it's a signal function. Oh. It's available. Oh, you just pull oh. it and you can configure it. Yeah. Uh, and now that we have the subset, let's to say that uh, I'm going to rename it this subset to not confuse it with the other one because I'm going to merge the information in order to compare uh, how is the original one and the subset one. So um, here I'm going to merge the two objects. Yes. And let's just to see at the table in order to check the information. Yes. Uh, to, merge the, to merge the objects, uh, we have these, uh, these available, this function. I provided the original one and what is the, the second subset that I'm going to attach or the other experiment, whatever experiment that you wish. And these are the names that are going to provide to each one of the samples. And this is the number of the project. 
In this table, you can see that for the first object, I have 3,200 cells. And in the second, that I choose it, I have 2,600 cells around. So now that you have that, we can compare, uh, make a brief comparison just to plot information quickly. And you can like compare several objects that you are like adding. So you can add, I don't know, your controls or your treatments, and you can see how the information is after to QC it. And that's all what I have about quality for today. And so I'm going to continue providing information here in the repo. Where is the repo? Well, I, I put in the Aristotle club. <laughs> Yeah, where, where I put it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. It, it's that one. So uh, just to, there is the script, there is some kind of levels and information. And, but the, the most important, I think that I'm going to add these issues that suddenly jump and we don't know what is the source exactly. For example, uh, the thing with the versions is very important. The, the, the quantity of memory, if you want to get some kind of plot and the way that you have available. And that's all I think for this part. Yeah. Cool. Um, thank you, Cynthia.